The world is moving into a new era, when water will be a resource as prized as oil. How we manage the demand will be critical, especially in areas where water is scarce. Fred de Sam Lazaro begins a two-part look at how the Mideast is approaching this crisis. He begins in Israel, where technology is making all the difference. Yossi Schick manages a huge date farm owned by a kibbutz or commune. 18,000 trees produce some 1,600 tons of dates a year. They are exported around the world. But what you cannot tell is what was here before the farm. This used to be the Dead Sea, part of the Dead Sea. Nothing grew here before. The farm is possible because over the last two decades, Israel has become a world leader in conserving, recycling, and even producing water in one of the driest places on Earth. It wasn't like that 40 years ago when the farm was first planted. The beginning we were optimistic, but it didn't take long before we realized that if we want to carry on and uh, grow, we have to change our uh, way of thinking. Now all of the water Sheik uses on his farm is recycled, treated sewage coming directly from Jerusalem some 30 miles away. In fact, 87% of all sewage generated in Israel, while not fit for drinking, is recycled for use in agriculture where it is safe. If you were not here with this artificial system of delivering water here, what would this land look like? Complete desert, nothing. It's not just recycled water. Israel now also produces most of its tap water straight out of the Mediterranean Sea. It's the largest plant of its kind in the world. Uri Shore with Israel's government-run water authority took me on a tour of one of its five desalination plants. 85% of Israel's drinking water now comes from desalination through a reverse osmosis technology whose costs have dropped in recent years. 20 minutes ago, this was seawater. Two more plants will soon come online, all to serve a growing population and deal with a rapidly drying climate. Israel even plans to begin pumping desalinated water into what was once the region's largest source of fresh water, but has been severely depleted by overuse and the changing climate. I'm standing at the mouth of the River Jordan as it flows out of Lake Kinneret, the biblical Sea of Galilee. In normal times, I'd be under about 12 feet of water. But these are not normal times. There's been drought here for 15 of the past 20 years. And it's much worse than what was even being predicted. Gidon Bromberg is the Israeli director of the environmental group EcoPeace that brings together Israelis, Palestinians, and Jordanians to find regional solutions. The threat of climate change is so great in this region that if we don't work with our neighbors, then we're also at peril. Under international agreements, the Palestinian West Bank and Gaza buy most of their water from Israel. Israel has often restricted the supply, particularly in the Gaza Strip. Bromberg says the arrangement is fraught with mistrust. Dependency in the highly conflictual part of the world is not politically attractive. And therefore at Ecopies, we've been trying to think of, well, how, do we, how can we create interdependencies? EcoPeace has proposed that Gaza, with its 25-mile coastline, also build large desalination plants with international financing. Similarly, Jordan, with vast deserts, could supply solar energy for the entire region, including Israeli desalination plants, which now run on natural gas. We're in the same boat, and we're either going to float together and sail that boat literally down the Jordan, or we're going to sink here at the Sea of Galilee. For now, Israel is proceeding on its own, relaunching a conservation campaign in the media, in addition to its investment in desalination. As for the Palestinians' dependence on Israel for water and power, Uri Shor says Israel would like its neighbors to recycle and produce more of their own water. For instance, if uh, the Palestinian Authority will treat their sewage exactly like Israel, they can increase the quality of water that they have by 40%. It's quite a lot. 
they do not do it. They do not do it because they aren't allowed to, says former Palestinian Water Minister Shaddad Atili, citing in particular Israel's 11-year blockade of the Gaza Strip following the election there of the Islamist militant group Hamas. When you find people, prisons, jailed, with no water, with no electricity, with no food, with no work, there is no hope in Gaza. Our people, they are desperate. Ecopeace's Bromberg agrees conditions in Gaza are desperate. The sewage doesn't stop uh, in the aquifer, just at, uh, on the Gaza side. It clearly contaminates the groundwater on both sides. He showed me wastewater that flowed right next to the wall that separates Gaza from Israel. We have a ticking time bomb here uh, in Gaza where the likelihood of disease breaking out is highly likely. The United Nations has concluded that at the current rate, the Gaza Strip will become uninhabitable by 2020 because of the lack of water, sanitation, and electricity. That's prompted a scramble by international aid groups to provide emergency assistance. We'll explore efforts by international aid agencies to deal with Gaza's water crisis in our next report from the region. For the PBS NewsHour, this is Fred DeSam Lazaro near the Israel-Gaza border. Fred's reporting is a partnership with the Undertold Stories Project at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota.